Okay, this is the chapter 8 example video. Um, so, example 8.1. A 25 millimeter diameter steel rod is used a, as a pin connected compression member. Calculate the critical load using Euler's formula. The proportional limit for the steel is 235 MPa and the modulus of elasticity is 207 times 10 to the third MPa. Assume the rod to be one meter long and be two meters long. Okay, so we're given a steel rod, 25 millimeters in diameter. We're given what our modulus of elasticity is and what our proportional limit is. And what we are to find is Euler's critical load. First step, we're going to calculate the area, pi over 4d squared. Next, we're going to calculate the radius of gyration to go into our slenderness ratio. So, if we look in table 3, for a round bar, the radius of gyration is d over 4, which is 6.25 millimeters. The critical stress, by using 18.2, is going to be pi squared times e divided by L over R squared. That's our slenderness ratio. I calculated the slenderness ratio here is 160. And then I calculated what my critical stress is using equation 18.2. And I got 79.8 uh, MPAs, which is also 79.8 Newtons per millimeter squared. Um, the first check, 79.8 is less than the proportional limit of 235, so therefore this is okay. So what we're saying here is for Euler's equation to be valid, your stress has to be less than the proportional limit. Okay, so therefore, to find the critical load, we're going to take our critical stress and just multiply it by the area. Okay, the area of the column in this case. And what I get is 39.2 kilonewtons. So if we were to do that same thing for critical load equals 2, I mean, for the critical load for L equals 2 meters, we get a new slenderness ratio here is now 320 instead of 160. Um, our critical stress goes considerably down. Okay, if we had 79, almost 80 MPAs here, hey, we're down to 20. We're cutting the fourth. Um, again, we'll make the check here that says that our critical stress is below the proportional limit. So for Euler's to be valid, the critical stress must be below the proportional, proportional limit. And then to find the critical load, we'll multiply by the column area. Okay, so the next one, 18.3, shows us how to apply the effective length factor. So here we have a 3-inch standard weight pipe fixed at one end, pinned at the other. And we have a span of 12 feet, um, proportional limit of 34 KSI and a modulus of elasticity of 30 million PSI. And we're going to find the buckler, Euler's buckling load. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our appendix B for pipes, and we're going to find that our area is 2.07 square inches, and our radius of gyration is 1.17 inches. Um, then we're going to go to table 18.1 to find what our effective length factor is. And for the design, we're going to select a 0.8. K equals 0.8. Okay, so then we're going to calculate what our critical stress is for Euler's. And we're going to have a KL over R is going to be our slenderness ratio. Here I calculated KL over R squared. Um, so therefore, our critical load is going to be 30.5. Um, times 10 to the third PSI. Again, we're going to compare this to the proportional limit. And yes, we're below, so therefore it's okay. Euler's equation is valid. And then our critical load is going to be our critical stress times the area, which gives us 63.2 times 10 to the third pounds. Okay, so this one over here is, is using the AISC approach for calculating. Um, buckling for it's really a design problem uh, so given this W1250 structural steel column with pinned ends um, your yield strength equals 50 your modulus of elasticity is 30 times 10 to the third KSI and we're supposed to find the allowable load 
for a length equals 15 feet. Okay, so then we go into Appendix A um, for the beams. We get the area of this beam, 14.6 square inches, and then we get the radius of gyration in both directions, Rx and Ry. Um, here's the thing about columns. It will fail. It will buckle in the weakest direction. Okay, so when we're going into this equation, we are going to use the smallest radius of gyration. R equals 1.96 because the column will always buckle in the y direction because the radius of gyration is smaller than the x direction. Um, our k is 1.0 because of the pinned ends. That's ideal column setup. Our transition. Okay, so all of these problems for these design problems start with calculating what is your transition slenderness ratio. So here we use the form for the transition slenderness ratio and we get 115.4. Our actual slenderness ratio for this design problem is 91.8, so therefore 91.8 is less than 115.4, so we're going to use equation 18.8, and that uses um, this equation right here. Notice that in the exponent, we got this term here, that's our critical stress, Euler's critical stress right here that's in that exponent. Um, so we need to calculate that first of all. That's what I'm doing here, calculating that critical stress here. That critical stress number goes into the exponent here, and then we solve the equation for 241 kip. Okay, and then if we find that for L equals 30 feet, we have a different slenderness ratio. So that puts us now up into the slender columns here. We're greater than the transition slenderness ratio. So we're going to use equation 18.7, and that gives us 67.2. Um, the next one is a square machine member. Um, again, we do the same thing similar to what we did for the AISI. We calculate what the slenderness ratio is. We calculate what the transition slenderness ratio is. A different formula from, from the first one that we talked about, the AIC. This is a different formula. So we use this formula. And then based on where this falls relative to the, the transition KL over R, we apply one of two different equations. So again, it's the same thing. 18.8. Um, is for timber column design. Um, so our critical um, slenderness ratio is going to be 50 in this case, and our it's L O K L over D is our slenderness ratio. Um, so and it's a little bit different. So then we have to calculate what this alpha factor is. You can follow this in the book 1813. Um, equation 1813 and then you put that into the CP equation and then you get this FA equation that's based on the the, the, the um, load here FC um, so follow along in the textbook I gave you one problem of each of these to do for your assignment and good luck